I believe we are uh, going to be start, uh, starting tonight's uh, talk. Thank you so much, everybody, for joining us uh, for this uh, talk, pause and meditate. I'll be, my name is Sultan Saud Al-Qasmi. I'll be your moderator uh, tonight. It gives me a great pleasure to bring together this wonderful team of artists that I've known about and admired, uh, some for many years and some I've known about recently. So equally admi admiration for everybody. Um, I will begin by introducing uh, the structure of the talk. The talk today will last for one hour. Uh, I will introduce uh, the idea of Al Burda. And then we have three artists, each of which will have about four minutes or so to present their work. And then the second half of the talk, about 20, 35 minutes or so, will be Q&A. Uh, and I'd like to encourage you all uh, as attendees to send in uh, your questions. Uh, but I think I will begin by uh, sharing uh, my screen here and telling you a little bit about uh, what's happening um, with our talk today. So first of all, uh, I want to th thank my colleague Suhaila Takesh who helped me prepare uh, these slides for uh, tonight. So we are today revisiting uh, an important event and exhibition that took place in 2018 as part of Al Burda Endowment. It was actually the debut edition. I'll tell you more about Al Burda uh, in a minute. Um, first, I'd like to thank uh, Her Excellency Noura bint Muhammad Al Kaabi, who is the uh, Minister of uh, Culture and uh, Knowledge Development here in the UAE, uh, as well as uh, thanking uh, Sheikh Salem Al Qasmi, who's the Assistant Undersecretary for Knowledge uh, Development at the Ministry. By the way, we will be calling the Ministry MCKD here to save us some time, uh, as well as Farah Hajdid and Farah Arke, both from the Ministry, who have been instrumental in putting uh, this event. Uh, together. A little bit about uh, Al Burda now. Al Burda, uh, we need to keep in mind the, the three R's that uh, Noor Al Kaabi has stressed on why create Al Burda. Al Burda basically is to remind, register, and record Islamic art. And it is, it is an idea to look at Islamic art not only historically but in the contemporary sense and also create a platform for the future, uh, um, the future sort of promotion of Islamic art. Now, where does the idea? of Al Burda come from. Al Burda basically is a poem by Imam Al Basiri. Imam Al Basiri was a 12th century uh, Sufi mystic uh, Imam who uh, was also a very famous poet. And uh, the, uh, he wrote this important poem uh, called Ode of the Mantle. And that is where the idea of Al Burda comes from. I'll show you, I have a, I have a, a cover of one of, uh, one of the books uh, that contain this poem. But the idea basically is to celebrate Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, is, uh, his uh, birthday. And it was launched in 2004. In 2018, it became a fully fledged uh, festival that included performance, talks, uh, as well as an exhibition. And in, it also included an endowment, something that all of us who work in the arts field will tell you how important it is to have an endowment to uh, make sure that there is sustainability in the arts world. So this is really a commendable idea. It's quite a sizable endowment as well. It's $135,000. So um, this is really a great initiative by the ministry and I thank them very much. Here I have a cover of one of Busayri's uh, poem of the, the mantle, some of the poetry here. Again, it has to do with celebrating Prophet Muhammad's uh, birthday. So I encourage you to pick it up or at least look it up uh, in the internet. We have three uh, rock star artists uh, today that I'll be introducing one by one in no order of preference whatsoever. Uh, we have uh, Aisha Khalid, who's a contemporary artist on the left, contemporary artist from Pakistan who studied traditional miniature painting at the National College of Art in Lahore. She completed her postgraduate studies at the Rijks Academy in Amsterdam in the Netherlands and has since participated in numerous exhibitions around the world, including the VNA, Sharjah Biennial, Lahore Biennial, and many, many others. Now, all these artists, I really had to cut down their, their bios because they're so accomplished. Uh, next, we have in the middle, Stanley Sue. Uh, Stanley is the founder and principal of Daydream, Daydreamers Design. It's uh, an art and design collaboration. He graduated from Unitec School of Architecture in New Zealand uh, before working in Hong Kong, Australia, mainland China, Italy, Macau, Malaysia, and he was the chief curator of the Hong Kong exhibition at the 15th Venice Architectural Biennial. And last but not least, certainly Zulekha Abdullah, whose practice spans a uh, installation, drawing, video, photography, and she explores so many themes, including 
uh, gender, sexuality, social issues, globalization, identity, all these things really come under uh, Zuleikha's work, which I've known about for maybe 10 years or so. Her work has widely been exhibited around the world, including at the Maury Art Museum, the Tate Museum, uh, the Brooklyn Museum, uh, over here in the UAE in numerous places, and has been awarded uh, a number of awards, including the Maurice Prize for Contemporary Art and the Villa Medici Or Les Murs Award. But we will begin uh, with Aisha Khaled, who I will present uh, the, uh, the, um, the remote to. Uh, Aisha, I'd like to um, spotlight your video uh, first, and I'll give you the remote control as well. So you can, you can control the remote and share your slides. Go ahead. Um, hi, everyone. <laughs> um, I'm Aisha Khalid, and I'm based in Lahore. So it's lovely to join this group. Uh, thank you, Sultan, for uh, uh, putting my work here. So this is uh, the work I have done for uh, Al Burda Endowment. Um, as um, Sultan already uh, introduced about um, Al Burda, so when I received an, an invitation last year um, for this exhibition, and I read about that the initiative of uh, Al Burda Endowment Fund was about the, to celebrate Islamic art and to celebrate. Um, uh, Prophet uh, Muhammad Sallallahu uh, Alaihi So it was a great pleasure for me to create something for this initiative. Actually, because I am working for many years uh, um, dealing with the spirituality in my work. So um, it was a, a wonderful uh, opportunity for me to create something. So what the first thing came in my mind uh, around this was this green tapestry. Um, I think I will share this, which these are the four tapestries which make a cube. And um, I have made it, it was inspired by the covering of Kaaba actually, because as a child, I have uh, listened so much about um, Kaaba and uh, the story between Kaaba and the Prophet's mosque, Prophet Salam's mosque. So uh, I always have this, you know, um, fascination about these two beautiful uh, places and very sacred places. So I, when I started thinking about this um, to create something, so the Ka Kaaba covering came in my mind. So I made that in a green color and the. Uh, there are ababils, the, the birds are flying, and when you follow these birds, you follow the, uh, so you, you know, walk around the whole piece. Um, so this is like an interactive piece, and um, you can experience it by going inside and see the other side of this tapestry, which is, which feels like gold fur, because from inside it's, uh, it's black. So it feels like you are inside of some very, very sac sacred uh, place. So this is the whole, it was, uh, this work was all about my love for uh, Kaaba and for Prophet uh, Muhammad, peace be upon him. So uh, this was the work uh, which I have done for um, um, Alberta Endowment. And this exhibition is traveling, so you will see this work on more places, I guess. And the next is, uh, this is, uh, I, I want to mention the title of that work, that called Garden of Love is Green Without Limit, which is coming from the Rumi, Rumi's poetry. I'm very much inspired by Sufism. I'm practicing uh, Sufism from last 22 years. So uh, the Rumi's, uh, Poems and poetry uh, inspired me time to time and more, most of my work, if you see from last 10 years, 12 years, so it is around that uh, spirituality and uh, Sufism. Um, and the next work is, um, I have done, I don't know what happened. Yes. So this is a mural I have done for uh, Islamabad Airport in 2000 and, um, 17 and it's a huge mural mural uh, it's almost 200 feet long and 12 feet high 
and this is uh, the geometrical pattern which is my main uh, vocabulary of uh, painting so the, here i i was dealing with geometrical pattern uh, which is coming from classical islamic pattern and there is a written um, verse underneath which is about uh, traveling this verse is from quran which we very sight before traveling and where while we travel so this work is called you are universe in the ecstatic motion um and uh, yeah I, i don't know if i have more time to talk <laughs> i can it's okay you have an, you have an extra 30 seconds let's say so you want to add one more thing yeah so this is the, the main uh, this work is uh, done on the canvas uh, acrylic paint on the canvas but my, my main medium is to work with um, gouache on paper so yes uh, thank you so much uh, aisha uh, stanley i'm going to uh, hand over the remote uh, to you so that uh, you can uh, uh, you can you can talk about your uh, your slides coming up next okay there you go Okay, thank you, Sudan. And hi, everyone. My name is Stanley, and this is on the screen. You can see it's my um, Al Buda and Dolman work. It's called Conversion. Um, it's the third artwork or piece of work that um, it's related to um, Islamic art by myself. And this one, as you can see, you enter into a structure. Um, you look up into the structure on the, the ceiling of the work. You see 7,000 Chinese ink brushes. It forms the Islamic geometry, which I'm very um, obsessed with. Since 2016, it was the first time I encountered Islamic art. And it was the first time I visited UAE. Um, since then it really changes my mind um, on design and different aspects um, so it, it uh, perhaps because I'm, I'm an architect therefore i think um the way how i see an artwork it's more um, of a three-dimensional um instead of hanging it um from the wall you you really enter this um artwork not only you 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 changes your dimension of viewing it but also you started to meditate because you're sort of looking up into the ceiling to see this geometry the color this work it's the common factor i think between the chinese art and the islamic art because and the work the name of the work is called conversion and um, try to convert something and this is really i really like this piece because it somehow it has a meaning behind um the two culture uh, as a as a you know i live in hong kong as an asian uh, it's really great opportunity to join this endowment and therefore i want to have this cultural exchange not only i am taking away something i also want to share my experience so the common factor between the two art i think the chinese art and the islamic art i found this ink brush it's something that we both uses to create our art in islamic art we um draw you know um calligraphy um, um pottery and with the ink brushes and to the chinese art we do um san shui which is the um chinese calligraphy and then also the um the, the, the artwork we also use is um, the ink brush so this is the really um something i found in common between the two so that's why i have this um work conversion for the endowment and quickly um this is the first time i really appreciate um sudan select this work because i really liked it it was um the 19th it was 2016 at the islamic art festival in saudia i was very excited to create this work it's um it's the other way around this is more like um very architectural because this is a spiral journey and this is the um, El Majaz waterfront it's an amazing place and you walk through this spiral it's about um, 100 meters and within this um, artwork there are a hundred pieces of arches um, 10 different type of iconic um, arches from the um, traditional mosque and um, they are the most important style um from the from the islamic architecture um from the photo you can see um the way you experience it you you go through this 100 meters journey 
at the same time, you went through um, going back into time of the Islamic architecture by understanding all these different types of arches. Thank you. Thank you so much, Stanley. I have so many questions for you and Aisha. Uh, before that, we will be uh, going to Zulekha's uh, talk. Zulekha, I will hand over the remote control to you so you can control your slides. Um, go ahead, Zulekha. So thank you very much uh, for the organized this panel uh, to uh, Bourda Endowment, and uh, thank you, uh, Sultan, for to to moderate uh, this panel. And I'm happy to see you again because, of course, we met already ten years ago, and you follow my work. And I'm happy to to uh, to to be with you and to be with Aisha and Stanley. So um, yeah, the, I, I'm going to start by the first work. Um, if I can uh, get uh, the yes, thank you. Uh, this uh, the work installation called uh, that I called the uh, Acrobat. Uh, it's uh, it's the piece I made for the Borda Endowment. Uh, so it's a, a mobile that it's rotate. I'm gonna put my uh, my timing, uh, and uh, it's it, it is inspired by the Sharfa Sharfa, which is the traditional shape of uh, Moroccan uh, iconography coming from the traditional uh, tile work. Uh, you have uh, many examples of this kind of Sharafa in uh, Al Hamra or Al Khazar in uh, South Spain. Um, and with the movement, uh, I think that we can see the video here, but with the movement, uh, the, the installation creates a kinetic connection uh, with the, the viewer. And uh, the second work, if I can. Uh... Ah, okay. I don't know why it doesn't work. So the second work, it's uh, called The Love. Uh, I, I don't know. Ah, I have a Wi-Fi problem, I think. Ah, OK, thank you. So uh, one second. I want to go back to the. Sorry, I have a Wi-Fi problem. So, it's, okay. so the next work I want to talk about, it's called Love. Uh, it's uh, I created in 2009, and uh, of course it's about love, as you can read if you read Arabic, and it's a help. Uh, so when I hand uh, when I hanging the words on a big size, uh, it's uh, it's uh, influenced too by the uh, Islamic architecture because uh, it's uh, traditional to put the big words, the big um, in, in on the on the on the inside the building and outside the building. So uh, it's a way uh, for, for me to subscribe to this ancient tradition in Islamic art, which to give to the world the statute of a body that is traditionally, traditionally prohibited to, to represent. The um, other work is the spider. Uh, and the spider is the, um, here it's, uh, a collection it's of course a tribute to first it's a tribute to um, to louise bourgeois uh, sculpture uh, and uh, but but it's not only of course a tribute to louise bourgeois there is more than that okay um okay so i uh, use different style of uh, islamic or western architectural or uh, architectural acts to create an organic body here, as you see, it's the spider. Uh, it's a dialogue between the architecture of uh, human production or mental creation, if you like, and the natural uh, form that the nature creates. And um, here, uh, oh, it's still about arcs. And uh, here, it's um, a piece. Is, it's called Ar Arches, or Arc en Francais. Uh, it's a piece I have made in 2013, and uh, it's a collection of different style, as you can, uh, as you have seen in the installation and the installation, uh, monumental installation of Stanley. It's a collection of different style of arcs uh as well but here it's about the principle of uh, openness because as you see the arcs are they, there is not a real openness because they are standing uh, against uh, uh, the wall 
And uh, here you see the work, uh, Is Your Love Darling Just a Mirage? It's a piece that I made in 2011. And of course the reference here are to, um, to Elvis Presley song. I don't know if you, you, know, you know this song. And it's made of Zelige ceramic. Zelige is a traditional tile work uh, in Morocco. Uh, used the shape of the French uh, fighter aircraft called Mirage because of its uh, stealth uh, skills to avoid uh, detection. And with this piece, I wanted to question in the uh, contradiction that can exist between the craft and the high tech. So um, I think I still have two pieces. I'm going to go fast because I'm running out of time. So the, the, the piece is called Alcove. It's, I made it in 2017. And here again, it's about arch and uh, element of architecture. And the arch, arches here, to, uh, I, made, uh, I used them to create a space that uh, really don't exist. Uh, it's about space, but here it's an empty space. To, to invite, uh, to think about the space of imagination, to, to, to the, the space that, uh, that you, you, you take a place uh, hidden from the inquisitive uh, looks. And finally, uh, you have here a collage to, to go to 2D uh, work. Uh, it, it's, uh, I made it in 2014 from a collection that I call, I call Siri that I call Envers en droit. And here it, the, you see cutted images from the masterpieces, canvas related to the Western painting. You see here Odalisque or the, the, the canvas of Chasserio, for example. They are orientalist, if you want. And here I use the figurative uh, images that I cut, I cut into geometrical patterns and I organize them to create another uh, composition. So the figurative gets mixed with the abstraction and vice versa. So I hope I wasn't too long. Thank you, thank you, that was great. Thank you so much. Uh, I'll stop sharing my screen and then we can go back into uh, Q&A with everybody. Um, I have so many questions. I think Aisha, I'd like to begin uh, with you. Uh, again, your work really reminded me of the quote by Her Excellency Noor al kadi which is uh, that the Burda's idea is to remind, register and record Islamic art. The reason I say this is your work was originally inspired uh, by uh, miniature, uh, um, miniature drawings, but then, especially the Mughal ones, uh, but then you move con completely to contemporary art. So how do you merge this inspiration from the Mug Mughal uh, painting into contemporary sensibility? Uh, please unmute yourself. <laughs> uh, Aisha, can you unmute yourself, please? Thank you. Sorry. Uh, Begin from uh, sorry. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. So um, I'm trained as a miniature painter, uh, and miniature uh, painting is a, a traditional historical technique. That's why I was very much interested in, into it. I always been interested into something which is coming from a tradition. Um, so I decided to take and learn this technique, and my teacher was a very traditionalist, and I the whole training uh, was like a, based on a very traditional, strict traditional practice. We were not allowed to do any experimentation in that, within that technique even when I was a student. But there was, I always take this medium as a medium of expression. So uh, it doesn't really, you know, for me, uh, it wasn't uh, any burden on me to keep the tradition alive, but rather I was using this uh, fascinating technique for my own ideas and inspirations. So um, I, I started uh, many years ago and uh, it evolved with the time, I, I would say, uh, because there was always very strong feeling inside me to uh, use the technique as I want to use it, as I want to express myself. And I feel that every technique has this medium has this uh, potential to, you know, extend it on any level uh, if you want. So um, with this technique, uh, I started with the postcard size painting literally in 90s, late 90s. And uh, now if you see from with the time, they, it, the scale increase, now I'm working on 
for about eight feet, even on a larger scale, like the mural I have done for the airport. So I don't feel any boundaries or any, um, you know, limitations within any technique, uh, any medium, um, which is coming either coming from tradition or not. So um, yeah, this is how I'm, I perceive it. So that's why I, you can see uh, that modern aspect in my work. Thank you so much, Aisha. Uh, before I move to Stanley, just a quick remark to uh, Zulekha. Uh, we've had uh, someone called Sharina Haleman who says, I absolutely loved the spider, beautiful work. Maybe when you come back to you, you can uh, talk about it. Uh, but Stanley, I think you alluded to what I'm going to ask you about now is that you trained as primarily as an architect, but you work in uh, uh, architect and designer, but you work in visual art. So how different and how similar are these fields? Um, I think they share a lot of similarity, but um, the difference would be architectural design, the scale would be much, much bigger. And then um, it's more about the community. It's about space and how we react to it. Um, in terms of visual art, it, it's more um, sophisticated. You know, we can apply more meaning to visual art, but the way how I treat these two different works, um, I usually get inspiration from the other. So when I'm designing architectural work, I get inspiration from um, art and the visual art. And when I'm creating visual art, I get inspiration from architecture. So I'm like sort of running between um, the two um, different subjects. Actually, I wanted to share a question we got from Roxanne Zand, who's acclaimed uh, uh, um, authority on Islamic art. And she says uh, to Stanley, um, uh, does your architectural inspiration derive from monuments and mosques or is it a 3D expression of other Islamic motifs? Um, for instance, Sparrow Arches, the work that I designed, um, done for um, Saudi Islam, it's, it's a research on um, the Islamic architectural history because that was the first time I um, encountered with Islamic art. That, that really gave me the opportunity to go into the history. I studied you know, um, different types of Islamic architecture. And from there onward, I find the concept, the idea of arches, because I see a lot of um, beautiful arches. And then from there, I, I want to create this sort of journey to explain the research I have done instead of using all these texts. So this is the, the visual impact, I think, to create this work. Thank you. I should add that a uh, big thank you to Stanley Siu, who's actually joining us from Hong Kong. It's around 2 a.m. there, I believe, if not later. So thank you once again for staying up so late for us, Stanley. Moving now to Zulekha Abu Abdullah. Zulekha, I have so many questions for you, maybe because I'm so familiar with your work, but I'd like to, I have so many questions, but I'd like to maybe begin with uh, the, the idea um, is that you're, to keep in the theme of architecture, a lot of your uh, work is uh, uh, rooted, especially the one for Al, Al Burda, is rooted in Moroccan architecture uh, and the tile work of Al Hamra. It's very minimalist, but it's also contemporary. Can you tell us more about how you fuse these notions of history with the relevance of the present moment? Uh, yes, there is too much to say about that, so I'm going to try to be um, uh, precise. So, um, I, I actually, what interests me on architecture and, uh, and the Moroccan uh, architecture, especially, is the uh, space of the Riyadh, because when you get inside the Riyadh, it's kind of, it's kind of for, for me, uh, uh, listening to a poetry, you know, it's the experience of feeling the space there is the the, the element of feeling that it it's it adds to just uh, to to uh, this uh, just uh, the to leave the space you know you you come you um, you are not uh, only someone who live in this inside the space you are someone who experiment the space that lead you to that everything in the space lead you to that for example uh, when you the, the court the middle court what it's called the, the riyadh it's that's the given name to the, the whole building. Uh, the Riyadh is the little garden or little uh, space uh, that, uh, the, 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 for example, the fountain in the middle. Uh, it's not here and it's not inside only to, to, to give you water, but it's there 
to make uh, this little sound of water and to make you dream of uh, the river in the paradise in the heaven and uh, the, even the court is the square and around the square there is these rooms organized around the squares and the room are about the four uh, elements you know it's the water the earth the air fire and uh, uh, even the tile work the the liege uh, that decorate the space it's to make your uh, it's about beauty to the idea to make your life on earth beautiful as you wish it you wish that it's it's going to going to be in paradise and uh, yes there is many many poetry inside the building and i, I like this uh, idea of contemplation that uh, that maybe you have uh, we have lost in the modern contemporary and uh, contemporary architecture because contemporary act act uh, architecture just want us to be to be useful you know to go straight to the point you know so uh, yes, uh, what I like about the Riyadh, that's a roof. It's not only a roof; it's a sky actually, because it's uh, there is a, uh, a hole, there is a square that uh, it's open to the sky. Thank you so much, Zulekha. Uh, Aisha, moving on to you. Actually, it's a question that I will be asking all the panelists. So Stanley and Zulekha, you can have a chance to think about your answers as well. But there's a question from uh, Mirna Ayad, who sends you all her regard regards. Mirna, of course, is very prominent uh, journalist, writer, consultant, uh, and a friend to all of us, I believe. Uh, Mirna is asking, uh, she first says, read the catalog. So she's saying the catalog is very good. But she says, now I'm curious to know, I begin with Aisha, but I also ask Stanley and Zulekha, curious to know what type of work the artists are doing in, uh, in quarantine right this time. Uh, Aisha, let's begin with you. Okay, so in my life, there is not much change in due to quarantine. I have my studio inside the same premises I have home. So my everyday routine is the same. I every day, my studio starts from nine till three and then in the evening. So my uh, in routine is my life. I'm very less social person. I only go for my exhibition when there is an opening or something else. Uh, so there is not much change in my life in that way. Uh, so uh, in my artwork also, I'm not uh, addressing now directly to uh, the, what is happening um, about the, the mask. And I have because seen so many images on the media that with the paintings with the mask and this and that. And so. But I am where I am, I am there. So um, my inspiration comes from my uh, meditation because the process of my working is a very meditative. So everyday work is not a work for me. This is something which is very meditative process and to be in my studio, to spend time in studio is also very meditative for me. So, so this is a heaven I have even in, in this uh, difficult uh, time. So, but the new series, I'm working on my new series of work, uh, but not about uh, the quarantine, but about uh, which I have started even before. So I'm still working on that and with, on some other um, uh, proposal on uh, some other projects, uh, as well as I'm also establishing my farm, farming land. And just, I have harvest my wheat crop and now planning to, you know, uh, plant more vegetables and other things there. So this is my life. Aisha, that's so impressive. I haven't come across many artists who also plant and they look after their so many different fields of work. So quite impressive. Thank you, uh, Aisha. Stanley, uh, you've had a moment to think about this, but what kind of art are you producing now during confinement? Uh, yeah, uh, actually, even though we are under the quarantining period, but um, everything stays the same. We work every day. <laughs> Um, instead of meeting people directly, we are doing Zoom meeting as well. So um, at the moment, I instead of doing artwork, I am working on a museum project, and it's from the government of Hong Kong, and it's to revamp and and um, and declare monument building. And within that, we are going to showcase the um, intangible assets, um, the culture of Hong Kong. So um, basically, I'm working on that as an architect, the curator. 
Stanley, there's a question from uh, Afir, who's a fellow architect based here in the UAE, and he says, uh, as an architect, he also tries to approach dealing with space. He tries to create 3D installations, he says. He tries to do that before, but it's always stuck in the complexity of his own ideas. How are you able to simplify your idea and convey them into these 3D installations and renderings? This is from Afir. Okay, I think you have to move away from what you have learned previously with architecture. As I mentioned, I get inspiration between art and architecture um, when I'm doing the other. So try to be, um, to be, have a clear mind of what you want to do, have, a, um, have the idea. And like me, I, instead of coming up with a form at the beginning, some designer quickly, you know, they have a form they wanted to do that really dominates the, um, um, but there is a consistency of that artist or architect work. But for me, each of the work, um, the outcome would be different because you base on your reading, you read a lot of books and um, literatures or journals, from there you get your inspiration and that inspiration um it's really clear um from that you create and then that should be you know able to simplify your um complexity of thinking thank you so i fear the answer to you is simplify your thinking draw inspiration <laughs> clear your mind and you'll do very well inshallah it's the reikh abdullah i have so many questions again for you the first one is what kind of art are you creating in confinement um, and then there's a question from Alexander, which I'll post to you after. Uh, what I'm doing, uh, I'm, I'm not really creating, like, um, doing something concrete visually. I'm, I'm thinking, I'm organizing my ideas. I'm reading very much. Uh, I'm trying to learn Arabic um, <laughs> much more. <laughs> so, yes, uh, uh, no, um, I'm, I'm, I'm taking this time to calm down, to think, to, uh, to, 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 to get inspired by ideas uh, through books, for, through ideas, through theories, that have to say. <laughs> Zuleikha, you're, you're studying Arabic and I'm studying French, so maybe we can do an exchange. Yeah, please. <laughs> if that works for you. So the question I'd like to pose to you, Zuleikha, from Alexander is, he said there's a lot of references in your work. How are you dealing with globalization? And he says that he read that you grew up in a museum in Algiers. Is this correct? Yes, it's correct. <laughs> yeah, I grew up. Uh, I w actually I was born in Moscow. I grew up uh, in uh, in Algiers inside the museum, the Museum of Fine Art. It was uh, the biggest museum in Africa till uh, recently because there is another one big one in Cape Town in South Africa, which is good too. But uh, yeah, it, uh, the museum holds uh, an important collection of uh, Western art. Even there is modern from Maghreb and uh, it holds a lot of uh, pieces of Baya that I think that you like very much. Uh, artist so uh, yes i um, i from um, my my young age i i was dealing with the uh, the the multiple cultures the diversity so yes i i think for for me globalization it's more than a concept it's a real life and uh, for me it's more than a question of space because of course, I grew up in Algeria. I lived in France where I study. And then I, now I live in Morocco. I choose to live in Morocco next to Algiers, to Algeria. So, uh, and next to France and uh, next to Spain because I love the Andalusian and uh, art from Andalusia. So, uh, so yes, for me, uh, globalization, it's more about space. It's uh, the experience of uh, cultures, of ideas of uh, being interested on, on many backgrounds and that's what make the common uh, lead to diversity in your in your uh, in my work i think thank you so much Zalecha. that's a great answer uh, moving on to aisha aisha there's a question from a gentleman uh, who's been very patient uh, sam Kawash, who maybe i can quote uh, some of what Zulekha said here she was inspired by earth wind fire other elements so his question to you is what are the elements maybe from islamic art or non-islamic art that you have been inspired by uh, aisha um 
I am inspired actually my whole art practice is inspired by the culture Islamic culture my own culture I grown up in the from the embroidery stitchings clothes textile um, to uh, uh, everyday uh, household things to um, architecture around my father's farming I grown up in the whole that uh, thing and so everything is coming uh, when I focus and sit down and think about the, where the practice is coming. So I feel like it's more coming from my everyday life, from my culture and tradition, um, um, rather than from the art institute. Art institutions, they polished my um, the technique maybe. Uh, but the other inspiration and sense of um, aesthetics, colors, um, textures, um, the, the, everything is coming from my everyday life, I think. Uh, that's why I'm working on the textile pieces, a huge textile pieces with the needles. Um, this is because I, uh, as a child, used to learn embroidery, stitching clothes, work with textile and fabrics and I love fabric and textile. I wanted to become a textile designer, a fashion designer. And so in all my works, uh, this is a very prominent thing. Um, Thank you, Aisha. Actually, uh, before moving on to Stanley, I have a question from a very special guest who's joined us in this talk uh, tonight and it's Her Excellency Noura bint Mohammed al kaabi who is the Minister of uh, Culture here in the UAE and Knowledge Development, of course. Uh, and this question, I think, is directed to Aisha. And she says, uh, Aisha has another hidden talent called a traditional instrument, which is an organ-like instrument. Uh, can you ask if she's still practicing? <laughs> yes, I am, I am practicing. Uh, this is a new medium coming in my work because I always used to uh, listen to music when I paint. Um, traditional music, Sufi music, um, and I love music. So this, the music was the only thing in my life was, uh, I always feel like it's coming from some other world and how people sing and how people, you know, play instruments. So I started a year ago with the music, uh, two years ago with an instrument, it's a sitar. And uh, from one year uh, almost, I am practicing uh, classical vocal um, singing from my start, from, from, from the family, start family. So yes, I'm privileged and uh, I feel most, uh, you know, uh, luckiest person in the world that now I can little bit sing. Uh, but it's, it's, it's a learning. So, and uh, this music also in co collaborate with my art practice. In 2017, I have done art performance with the music. And the next I'm going to do soon in, in Birmingham, um, my exhibition is going to open in, in December. Uh, it's a survey uh, um, ex a show at Icon Gallery in Birmingham. Thank you so much, Aisha. Uh, Nazneen Shafi also said that you're learning uh, to sing as well. Stanley, moving on to you. Sorry it took a while to, uh, to do the whole rotation. Uh, Stanley, uh, there's a question from Farah here. By the way, I want to say that uh, I'm really impressed by the amount of questions you guys are getting because I sent you guys a bunch of questions, but I haven't even had a chance to get to them because a lot of people are excited and interested in what you have to say. So Stanley, moving on to you, uh, uh, the question from Farah is, is Islamic art considered niche practice in Hong Kong and how familiar are people with it? It's, yes, it is. Um, before I have the... Um, for my case, even though I, you know, work closely with visual art, contemporary art, architecture, but not until 2016, you know, I, I never had this opportunity to um, get to study, get to understand um, Islamic art. So it's something that it's hidden. Um, but once you get chance to, you know, look at it, experience it, it's, it, it will open up your mind. I, I believe that. So. Um, there isn't much opportunity yet, but if there's a chance, I think people will really enjoy the, the Islamic culture, you know, behind it. 
I'd like to go back, uh, Stanley, uh, briefly to your work that you presented at El Burda. Uh, the work is basically a structure with no walls. And this is something that you've done also in other artworks, like the one you did in Sharjah. But, but sticking with El Burda, once again, this is a, a, an architectural uh, element. You walk into it, there are no walls. It's transparent from every viewpoint. It almost is a metaphor for the fluidity of identities and transparency and openness. Can you tell us a little bit about this concept and the motivations behind it, please? Mm -hmm. And I really like um, creating space. And create space, you have to have some sort of structures. And with this work, I want people to have another viewing dimension of the um, of the ink brushes and the Islamic geometry. So I, I have this idea, you know, coming into my mind that we usually entered into architecture, even the mosque, you, you look up and then you see these stunning geometries, the mosaic work, you know, all these um, Islamic patterns. So why not having the work that um, hanging from the, from, the, from the ceiling? So this is the idea of having this hanging and then changing your dimension. And then agree that um, people can enter the work from different directions. Um, because I really want people to, you know, have this freedom of entering, getting out, you know, this is another, instead of, you know, when we, we usually look at the work from a wall, we, we, we sort of getting blocked by other people, you know, you get to wait for the other person to walk away. So how about have this work here, everybody can enter, um, you look up, but you are enjoying this, this space like a pavilion. Thank you, thank you. Moving on to Zulekha. Zulekha, thank you for being patient. Uh, we have a question from an emerging Emirati artist. Her name is Emel Anouhi, and she says that she's fascinated by Zulekha's use of arches in her work. And she says, do you think arches are symbols that resonate with art of other religions or are they unique to Islamic art? Uh, thank you, Amel uh, Anouhi, for the question. Uh, no, the ashes, it's not uh, belongs to the Islam uh, culture. It belongs to the universe, to the universal, to the human being creation from the beginning of the, any civilization. And it's rest, uh, interesting because it's the element, uh, the, the most uh, oldest element in architecture. It has 6,000 years uh, uh, because when... Uh, uh, a human, uh, the human being, when a, when a create a wall, they start with the ox. So it's like for me, it's an instinctively, it's like a, when a baby uh, want to walk, he would stand up and it was the same thing for architecture. First thing we built the ashes. So yes, this is a really the uni universal heritage, common heritage that we have. And even art of Islam, of it's the the the, um, the civilization that the most used all the reference that uh, it was uh, crossing her uh, her way. They used the um, temple, uh, the 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 columns from the uh, Greek ancient Greek temple. They used the uh, the space, the square space, the 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 high space of the coming from the domes for the cupola, the coming from the Byzantine. Uh, Byzantine uh, architecture. Uh, they they use the um, it, uh, uh, from how do you Roman, La Roma, from Rome, from Italy. So yes, they uh, they really. I mean, art of Islam. What I like about it's that, and that what we have to keep from from uh, from this art of Islam is the idea of universal of uh, uh, from singularity we create something new. And that's what we have, I think, to keep. It's the jawhara, is the uh, for me the core of the the Islamic art. And what what for me it make it uh, uh, timeless. You know, it's uh, it's and it make it even modern. Uh, maybe I go, I put my neck on the line, but <laughs> for me it's a kind of modern uh, way to think a space. Zuleikh, I have a question from uh, Nazneen Shafi. Nazneen is the founding director of the Young Architect and Design Program uh, here, lives here in the UAE. And she says a question I think that we're all uh, interested in here. Uh, tell us more about the influence of uh, Louise Bourgeois in your uh, practice. 
Uh, what I kept from uh, Louise Bourgeois is the, uh, the way that she used her background, her own life, to create something uh, to, that can, she can be connected to the world and uh, to the world. I, I think that's the big lesson that Louise Bourgeois, is, is, uh, the heritage that she left, that uh, it's like, uh, for me, if we have to uh, give another example in literature with Virginia Woolf, or it's the how women uh, use the, them, them life not as an uh, impediment, as an ops, uh, boundaries, but to create something that uh, become universal and talk to anyone, men or women. And uh, yeah, that's what I like about uh, Louise Bourgeois. Thank you so much, uh, Zulekha. Aisha, again, thank you for your patience as well. Uh, I think this is a question that um, you, you touched upon earlier, but you talk about, you spent 22 years, uh, I think, practicing Sufism. So I wanted to ask you about how important uh, is spirituality to your work? Can you elaborate on this issue? Aisha? No? Aisha? Okay. We're, let's move to uh, let's move to Stanley until we uh, get Aisha back. Uh, her internet connection might be uh, might be uh, stuck. Uh, sure. Stanley, can we move to you? Is that okay? Um, can you tell us, um, apart from practicing art and architecture, you're also a university professor in, in Hong Kong. What advice do you give students when it comes to finding inspiration for their projects and communicating their ideas? Um, for my students, I think they are quite different, their generation now. I, I teach this uh, first year architecture um, design, and I believe that they are living in a very comfortable zone at the moment. They have whatever, you know, they want to, to but I really, I always ask them to, it's like a slogan, you know, think out of the box, you know, but they tend to, you know, they, they don't usually do that, but um, I want them to get out of their comfort zone. I want them to um, experience. I always um, encourage them to um, understand other culture, you know, um, and read a lot of different things, you know. They they tend to always get stuck with the um, the phone and then it, it, it's sort of quite different from what we were when we were studying architecture and design. So my, um, I think I would like to ask them to um, try to understand, to see more different things and not only, even though you are studying architecture, but go outside architecture, you know, look at different things. From there, you will get inspiration. So. Um, I ask them to travel, I ask them to, you know, do whatever they not usually doing at home when they are studying, try different things, then they will get inspirations. Thank you so much. Uh, before moving to, uh, to Zalekha, once again, I, I, we have a comment from Mohammed Amran Qureshi, who says, congratulations on arranging such an amazing talk. It's wonderful. I think this comment goes to the organizers. Thank you so much. Uh, to everyone who's put this uh, talk together. Uh, moving back to uh, Zulekha until we get Aisha back, hopefully. Uh, Zulekha, I wanted to ask, um, in some of your previous uh, work, you have explored the notion of confinement, particularly how it relates to women. And I noticed you mentioned uh, insp inspiration by women, Virginia Woolf, Louise Bourgeois. Uh, now that we are all in self-isolation, it's so-called voluntary confinement. Can you tell us uh, how it may have changed your perspective or outlook on the subject. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, for me, um, uh, the confinement, uh, I know about, the, I feel like I have experienced it uh, before because when I used to, uh, when I was a kid, I, I used to go to holidays uh, in my parent family, North Algeria. And uh, we used to live in a really Arab style house with the square, with a kind of Riyadh. That's why I think I, I like Riyadh. And uh, the house was uh, full of women. Huh? And we, even there, 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 there are men, we didn't see them that, that much. We see them only evening for the dinner. And even we, when we have dinner, we have two separate space. 
So uh, I, I grew up with, the, I spent many, a lot of time with the women and all, all the, the stories uh, that you can imagine uh, around the, the, the women prisons. And of course, they talk all the time about men, which is interesting because I think that they, they, they go beyond the confinement with the, in the imagination, you know. And even I hear, actually, that make me, um, uh, that remind me the book of uh, Fatima Melnissi because I gave uh, reference of Virginia Woolf and Louise Bourgeois. And Fatima Melnissi, which is a sociologue uh, uh, from she uh, wrote a book called The uh, Dream of Women, maybe a reference to Virginia Woolf too. But uh, yeah, she, she talked about the power of women imagination when they are uh, uh, forced to stay in the space, you know. Uh, so for me, uh, this um, question of confinement that we are experimenting today, it strengths more. It's For me, it strengths more this question of, uh, of confinement that I study like uh, a political uh, um, a thinking of space because it's not the same when you are forced to stay somewhere and you cannot go out. And it's not the same when you have a choice of your space and uh, the choice how to deal with your space. Okay, so for those who missed for the internet connection, maybe there was uh, uh, a name that uh, Zuleikha Abdullah mentioned, which is the name of a very famous uh, Moroccan uh, author, um, Fadma Marnisi, and she wrote a book uh, called Beyond the Veil, amongst many, many other, uh, other books, passed away a few years ago. So thank you for bringing up her name as well, uh, Zuleikha. Uh, Stanley, we have a question from Dr. Faisal Mu'alla here in the UAE who says, uh, does, uh, does Islamic architecture have more of a plain appearance uh, or are these sort of fixed forms? So is there any difference? You, have, you, have you in any case or any way studied Islamic architecture um, and compared it to other architecture that you've come across? Um, for example, if you want to mention about Islamic architecture, I think we always talk about mosque design um, because that is the... the it's very unique because um, the functionality and the form, I don't believe there is really a plain appearance on um, Morse, for instance. Nowadays, you look at all the Morse design on any website, there are some really amazing design, you know, the form are no longer rectang rectangle or um, rectilinear or, or orthogonal form even they comes in organic shapes, you know, the appearance. So it's really, um, it really changes from our previous perspective of the um, traditional iconic mosque. So um, I do believe there are, there are some changes um, towards Islamic architecture. But if you look at other um, skyscraper, I think they are universal. They are, they are all the same everywhere. So um, it's, it's great that um, with Islamic architecture, we have um, we have mosques that we can like focus on, and we study how the whole thousand years of uh, mosque design have evolved from the beginning to now. You know. Thank you so much. I think I will end with uh, this uh, question from uh, Alexandre, uh, who has a, co a comment and a question. Who says architecture is not eternal; it is to build, but also to destroy. How does um, Stanley and Zuleikha view the concept of disappearance in their work? I may begin with Zuleikha first. Uh, how do you, Zuleikha, view the concept of disappearance in your work? Uh, uh, for me, disappearing is just uh, a step, uh, interesting step to uh, make the other uh, effect, which is appearing. There is no appearing without disappearing, so, <laughs> uh, yeah. But in architecture, um, it's a question, uh, the, um, uh, the, um, the runes, I like this, because the runes, uh, the ruin, the runes is uh, what we have as a sub substract of past time, and what we need to, what we can do with that. Okay, or should we arise or should we build again from the ruins? But yeah, I mean, all civilization, all city are built uh, on the top of uh, ruins, you know? So disappearing is made for appearing, I think. Uh, Stanley, do you like to comment on that? 
Yes, before that, I want to go back to the previous um, question. Sorry about that. Um, I think there is another type of architecture called um, vernacular architecture, mm -hmm. which are traditional houses. I have been to the tr traditional house design in Saudi and in um, Abu Dhabi. They are really nice. They are vernacular because they have to answer question. The question is how we can live under such um, extreme condition of hot air. You know, the I have learned about this um, without air conditioning, how they survive. So. Um, this is the, the treasure that we have now that we study the um, vernacular architecture. So um, again, I think we, it's important to, to, to read about it. Okay, um, disappearing of architecture, I think uh, it is, especially in my city, in Hong Kong, I mean, we have to develop. So all this um, great architecture, we have to um, demolish it um, in order to build new ones. So I, I think somehow we, we, we have to face this, face this issue, but we have to have a strategy that we have to protect some monument. We have to um, keep them for our future generation to see you know, how we evolved. Thank you so much, Stanley. Thank you so much, uh, Zulekha. Thanks so much to Aisha Khalid, who joined us uh, from Lahore earlier uh, in this talk. Uh, Zulekha joined us from Morocco, and Stanley Siu, who joined us from Hong Kong, where it's quite late. Uh, thank you for joining us on the third uh, edition of Al Burda Endowment Talks by the Ministry of Culture and Knowledge Development in the UAE under the theme Pause and Meditate. Thanks to all the organizers. Thanks to you for attending and join us at the uh, following talk, talk number four, where we're going to have even more exciting uh, speakers, artists, and, uh, and the like. Thank you all very much, and uh, good night to all of you, wherever you are. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye.